<laughs> How you doing everybody? It's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. How you doing today? Welcome to uh, my 23rd daily. Uh, today is December the 30th, 2017. We're coming up to the end of the year, folks. Unbelievable. Uh, I haven't done a daily for a week. Uh, I'm going through uh, YouTube withdrawal. But I took a little break, uh, spent a little uh, Christmas time with my, uh, my family and uh, back here at the house and uh, uh, gotta make some more videos, but I gotta say, folks, what, what is going on with my channel? I, uh, I leave you guys, uh, a week ago, I have 132 subscribers. I'm all excited because I'm getting ready to do the 150 subscriber countdown, only 18 to go to reach 150 subscribers. This is great. I'm all gearing up for it and I'm looking at my channel every day and it's, the subscriber count's going up and going up and this morning, 175 subscribers. Well, so much for 150. Oh my goodness, as a matter of fact, my 150th subscriber is a friend of mine who I personally know who took great delight in saying, I'm number 150. I'm, I'm your 150th subscriber. I thought, wow, this is fantastic. And it just kept coming and just kept coming. Now, you guys are coming on board. It's fantastic. People are hearing about the channel, 175 subscribers. Now I'm looking at 200, I can't believe it. Uh, this is still December. I, I've had over 100 subscribers this month. Uh, I was excited to get to 100 uh, back on about the middle of the month. And now it looks like I've got more than 100 subscribers who've come on board in the month of December alone. So the analytics are really kicking in, folks, as I had suspected. And, uh, uh, it's coming on and I can't be happier and more grateful. It's fantastic. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, I hope you had a good holiday. Uh, it's cold out there, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> it's just terrible. Uh, we got back here a couple days ago and I'll tell you, uh, six inches of snow have fallen since I got home. I'm glad I got home when I did. Uh, but, you know, winter is winter, what are you going to do? And uh, you know what I think about when it's winter? I think about going on a cruise. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you, there's some news on the cruise ships <clears throat> that are going on. I thought today I'd, I'd uh, do a little update on a couple of things. I read the other day, about a week ago, I guess, uh, a couple of cruise lines have quietly started announcing uh, increases in the daily amount that they're going to charge for tipping. Um, and I thought I would talk about tipping today. Um, those of you who've done cruises for years and years, you, you, you're familiar with how tipping works. Uh, those of you who've never taken a cruise, um, you may not know about it very much, although you've heard some things about it, or you're not quite sure what it means. And I thought I would uh, clear the air a little bit about what tipping is all about um, and how it really works on a cruise ship, because it, it's a bit different than, uh, than if you're taking a vacation, say, at a hotel uh, or at a resort, you know. Uh, and by the way, uh, speaking of resorts, uh, just for fun, I, I went on uh, Expedia.com the other day just to take a look at how much would it cost for a, for a hotel room with a beach view, you know, ocean view, in uh, South Miami, uh, just, you know, to give me an idea. And oh my goodness, uh, I, I thought about, uh, if I'm comparing a, a, a hotel room, say on a four or a five star hotel versus, you know, five star cruising, uh, it's not even close uh, for the money. Uh, what, what you're paying for a hotel room is unbelievable. I, I'm looking at four to seven hundred dollars a night in, say, February in Miami. Four to seven hundred dollars per evening, and then you got to buy your meals. You're gonna have to rent a car if you're gonna go anywhere, uh, and then your tips on top of that, of course, taxes and fees. I, I couldn't believe it. Cruise ships, you know, you can find cruises for. Uh, you know, balcony cruises, balcony rooms. Uh, you know, as I've been showing you, uh, some of the balconies I'm finding are in the $50 range, $70 range, $100 range. Uh, you know, and once once I hit 120 a night, I start, I kind of stop and go, oh, 800 a week, 900 a week. Oh my, that's too high. Uh, it doesn't have to be. I mean, you can go, the sky's the limit, of course, but compare the two. Uh, when you get all your meals on the ship included, uh, there is no resort fee because you're on a resort. Uh, taxes and fees are reasonable compared to uh, these onshore fees. I mean, you know, some of these uh, some of these states are uh, really hard up for cash, and uh, you not only have your you know state taxes, say for Florida, then you've got your your county taxes, then your city taxes. You add that up, these hotel occupancy fees and these resort fees, and 
I mean, we're talking 20, 25, 30% add-on to your room charge. Uh, this is getting ridiculous. And the poor hotel operator can't pick up the hotel and go somewhere else where it's cheaper to operate. That building is stuck there and it's there forever. They got to bring the tourists in at all costs. And um, I guess if they can get six, $700 a night, they're full, all right? Uh, for, for those of you looking for a you know, reasonably priced vacation, that's not the way to go, obviously. Cruising is the way to go. Um, but back to tipping for a second. Um, on a cruise ship, the, 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 the cruise ship operators basically are suggesting a $13.50, $14.50 a day per person tip fee or gratuity charge um, that they can basically pre you can prepay it before you even get on the ship, and that's what I like to do. I book my cruise, I uh, pay for my taxes and fees, obviously, because that's automatically charged, and I add my gratuities automatically on my on my bill. And so, before I even ship, step a uh, step foot on the, the ship, I prepaid my gratuities and tips, and I don't have to worry about it now. I don't have to worry about finding an envelope and finding a five dollar bill or a ten dollar bill or a bunch of one dollar bills and, and and tip this guy and tip this person. And I don't have to worry about it. It's all included in the fee. The thirteen fifty fourteen dollars. And fifty cents uh, a charge is divided uh, by the cruise line uh, to various departments on the ship automatically. Now, you and I, when we're on a cruise, we see our room steward every day. Is the person that comes into the room and does our bedding every day, it changes our towels every day, gets us ice if we want. You might see a secondary person that uh, kind of comes and go in our room, but we, what we don't see is we don't see the people doing the laundry downstairs. Uh, we don't see the the guys operating the ice maker. Uh, we we don't see uh, a lot of the behind the scenes staff. Like in the in the restaurant, you know, when you're sitting down for, for a restaurant, you got the guy coming to you with your your meal. Well, it's your waiter, and and you might have a busboy. You see the people running around with dirty dishes, and the secondary staff in the in the dining room, and of course the maitre d and that type of thing. You don't see the chefs. You don't see the sous chefs that do all the prep work. You don't see the dishwashers. Uh, you don't see all the grunts that just do all the hard, hard labor to make things run, right? Uh, and so when you are uh, leaving a tip, uh, uh, the gratuity charge, that includes everybody on board. They all get a slice of that amount of money. And it goes a long way to their overall salaries. Um, a lot of these uh, employees uh, in the lower levels, uh, not management. Management uh, is one level, and crew is another area completely. but. You know, from from dishwasher to to laundry people to the folks doing the ironing to the folks doing the vacuuming, uh, uh, you know, all these uh, all these folks, the sous chefs and all the other kitchen staff, uh, these folks are are generally from uh, uh, I'll say quasi third world countries, not necessarily third world countries, but a lot of them from the Philippines, Indonesia, uh, where getting paid in U.S. dollars is a big deal, and tip money makes a huge difference on their take home pay and uh, they'll 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 have say an 11 month or 12 month contract at a time and then they get a month off maybe two months off and they get to see their families once a year for uh, for a month or so uh, all during the year all during the, the, the their contract they're wiring money back home and so uh, the cruise lines uh, will we'll make arrangements with them to automatically send money back home to their families while they're on the cruise ship working away and so every every tip they get uh, really means something is, is important now, as a passenger, I don't know if you know this, but you do have the right to decline making uh, tip payments. Uh, tips are a suggested gratuity. They're not mandatory. And I have been on cruises where, um, you know, at the end of the cruise, I see a lineup of people at the hotel desk uh, on checkout day, day before the day of. And I've seen, I've heard people talking, uh, you know, in the uh, cafeteria line or, or at the cafeteria or, the, you know, the buffet line or the buffet table. You hear some people talking about uh, complaining about their service or, or not happy about this or not happy about that. And some people actually make a point of going down to the hotel desk and, and uh, reducing the amount that they're going to pay towards tips. Uh, others uh, insist on uh, making tip uh, payments directly to their staff in person. Um, well, that's great if, if you know who to tip, but if, 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 you, if you don't see the dishwasher and you don't see the sous chef, and how would you, how are you going to get a tip to them? And so um, I kind of go with the ship companies on this, the ship lines, uh, the operators. Uh, if they're suggesting $13.50 a day, $14.50 a day in tips, and that covers everybody, I'm a happy guy to pay it. Um, uh, to me, uh, if I'm on a, in Miami Beach and I'm at the Fountain Blue Hotel, four-star, five-star property, 
and I'm paying five hundred a night for a room, six hundred a night for a room, uh, five ten dollars a day for the uh, for the room uh, uh, person is nothing. I mean that's cheap. Uh, so there's five ten dollars a day in, in in tip money there. Now of course in a hotel room you. you you talk about two people automatically, and so if, if you're leaving ten dollars a day for a tip for the rooms for the room attendant, you know it's five dollars each. It doesn't compete with a ship, but you add up the other tips that you're going to be paying. Um, breakfast every morning, you know, if you're in a five-star hotel and you're paying for breakfast, you're talking twenty dollars a person for breakfast at, at minimum, and you're looking at a six eight dollar tip for breakfast. That's four dollars each. Then for lunch, uh, you know, if you're you're talking about a nice lunch, uh, fifty, sixty dollar for lunch uh, easily. Uh, there's another ten dollars in tip money, and then for dinner, you know, you go to the uh, the nice restaurant in the hotel. You're talking a hundred, hundred twenty dollars for dinner. Talking twenty dollars in tip money. Well, you add up that dinner tip and the lunch tip and the breakfast tip, and then all during the day when you are ordering a a drink by the pool or or a beverage, you're adding a buck here, fifty cents here, a buck here, two bucks there. You're spending twenty twenty five dollars a day a person in tip money. You're already spending it. Um, you know, you get get your car brought up from the valet, give them a couple of bucks. Uh, you know, it just it just goes, it just flows. Uh, some days, of course, uh, you don't take the car out, you don't tip the valet. Some days you eat. Uh, you know, you take a walk from the hotel to, you know, maybe a restaurant down the street, or or, or you hit a hot dog stand for a quick bite. You don't leave a tip at all. Fine, but it all varies. It all comes out in the end. Whereas with a cruise ship. You've covered everything. You've got the room stewards, you've got the kitchen staff, you've got all the laundry staff, and I just personally feel at ease with myself. Uh, even even the staff in the sauna, by the way, you know where I, you know I, you know I love a sauna. I don't have to tip the people in the in the room in the spa. I don't have to tip anyone at the spa. It's all covered, all taken care of. So to me, I just get that peace of mind knowing that I've made my tips to everybody. Everyone is covered. I don't have to worry about anyone else. If I wish to uh, drop an extra tip on any one particular person that I particularly enjoy uh, the service of, that's up to me to decide, and uh, that's great. Anyway, there's a bit over a little overview on the uh, on the tipping. You know, you add up the money. Uh, if it's fourteen dollars a night, a day per person on a cruise, uh, for a seven night cruise, it's it's about a hundred dollars a week. Um, if the cruise ran, uh, if you got the balcony for eight hundred dollars a person, seven hundred dollars a person, you add your taxes and fees to add the tips, another hundred dollars. It's not that much money, and by by the cruise lines having bumped the tips just in the last uh, week or so, they're suggesting starting January, February, they're going to raise the tip, suggested tip amount by a dollar a day, seven dollars a week a person. This is not a killer of the, you know, it's not out pricing up the cruise or anything like that. It's keeping the cruise in a very reasonable amount of, uh, you know, affordable uh, range for all of us. So I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to make those arrangements. Uh, the higher end staff on these cruise ships, they don't get tip money. Uh, the, the top managers, uh, uh, you know, the restaurant managers, the, the top end staff, they get well paid salaries, they get really well paid salaries. And um, they, they don't generally get tip money. It's the lower rung staff that, that really, that $200 a week, $250 a week, whatever they're getting, is everything. It is a huge amount of money. It goes a long way towards their, uh, towards their uh, lifestyle and, and the family back home. Now, another topic I wanted to talk about today, uh, just a little update. Um, those of you who are regulars of mine, you've been watching my channels, uh, you know that I've been uh, uh, doing a number of stories over uh, the last number of months about these hurricanes. Hurricane Irma, Hurricane Maria, uh, the islands of uh, St. Martin, St. Thomas, Puerto Rico, all the nightmare stories in the Caribbean. A bit of good news uh, today that I read. Um, just heard that in St. Thomas, uh, cruise ships are, are back. Uh, in St. Thomas, and that, that's great news for the local economy. Uh, apparently, just around Christmas Day, there were three cruise ships in town in one day. So over 10,000 cruise ship passengers and crew visited the island in one day. This is sorely needed business uh, for the St. Thomas, uh, for the St. Martin residents. A lot of business people in St. Martin live off of tourism, and the cruise ship uh, segment is a big one. There still are a high number of resorts in um, in these islands that have not yet been rebuilt or reopened. It'll, it'll take them a full year to get fully rebuilt out. Um, you know, not only did the the islands suffer dramatic uh, uh, infrastructure issues, so your roads washed out. 
uh, power lines snapped in half, uh, you know, wires everywhere, transformers destroyed. So the entire electrical grid had to be rebuilt in many, many areas. The uh, plumbing, the, the sewer systems had to be reinstalled and redesigned, rebuilt. They're still being done in, in some of the outlying areas, still haven't been finished yet. Roadways had to be repaved. Grocery stores reopened, corner stores, hardware stores, I mean, you name it. So if you're going to rebuild a hotel or a resort, uh, you need the grid up, uh, first of all, so that you have power for the power tools you're going to need to operate the rebuilding of your resort. Then you have to order in all of the uh, raw materials that you're going to need, your new roof, your new air conditioning systems, your new electrical systems, uh, and you need the personnel to, to either local or brought in to help rebuild the uh, resort. So at light speed, uh, some of these resorts will take a year to be fully rebuilt with all the new filtration systems for the swimming pool, all new deck chairs, all new everything. Landscaping is going to have to be done and, and cleared up. Because when you're a tourist in, in St. Thomas or St. Martin or, or uh, uh, you know, some of the island, island, other islands down there like St. Bart's, you're not coming to a resort to be in the middle of a construction zone. You're coming to a resort to come and relax and, and have uh, no noise, no disruptions. You're coming to recharge your batteries, and if you're spending somewhere, you know, 500, 1,000 a night, 1,500 a night, 2,000 a night for some of these, uh, you know, suites, you expect the best. And of course, the staff uh, have to be able to service all your, your needs. So your favorite drink better be there, your favorite meal, and you know, you're paying, you're going to get it. Well, these resorts just are not in a position two months after this massive storm to be able to operate and offer these kinds of services right off the get. It's going to take them quite some time. So next year is by the time, is really when these resorts will be up and running. So the folks in, in these islands who really depend on tourists to get by and make ends meet, you know, fishing boat, uh, fishing boat charter operators, uh, just uh, scuba diving uh, operators, uh, you know, a day trip uh, bus bus rider drivers who take you know bus tours around the islands and this type of thing. A lot of these folks are still laid off or uh, are working part time at best. And so having cruise ships come back and at least having uh, day visitors off of cruise ships, great news, great great turnaround. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to see, but uh, I'm sure that uh, cruise ship passengers who are getting off of these ships and are just hanging around the, uh, you know, within a mile or so of the ships won't see too much in the way of damage, but if they go in a ways, uh, go downtown a few blocks off the main drag or, or take a bus tour around the island, you're going to see remnants of what had happened there, and it was Armageddon. I mean, it was really tough, but... One thing at a time is, is better. I did also read today that the Cayman Islands uh, are doing very well. They're in the Western Caribbean, so they weren't affected by the hurricanes this time around, although they, a hurricane can visit the Caymans, but didn't this year. And they just announced record traffic, uh, record traffic by air and record traffic uh, by cruise ship visitors. And that's because, of course, uh, Passengers and tourists are going to the islands that can accommodate them and offer the nice weather and services. In the Cayman Islands, uh, uh, it's the high-end part of town when you're talking about the Caribbean. Uh, the, the Cayman Islands are not known as a discount travel island. If you're looking for a super deal, you're never going to go to the Cayman Islands. You're going to go for a nice vacay. Uh, Cayman Islands are right up there. Ritz-Carlton has a hotel there. The Westin has a hotel there. I mean, some really nice resorts there, but you are paying dearly for it. Cruise ship passengers love the Cayman Islands because when you get off the ships, hang out even on the public beaches, no one approaches you begging you for money. There are no homeless people in the Cayman Islands. There's none of that nonsense. Uh, it's just not tolerated. Uh, there's th There are no like soldiers on the beaches, like, like you know armed soldiers to protect you. Not needed. Uh, the islands are a very safe and secure place. Well-to-do, generally speaking, high standard of living. And uh, if you're a local there, uh, there is no excuse for, for you not having a job. There are just tons of work if you're an islander available for you. And so you don't have that, uh, that issue of homelessness and, and, and people begging for a dollar so they can feed themselves going on, uh, like in other Caribbean areas or Mexico or other islands and nations. So the Cayman Islands are doing well. The numbers are great. Uh, but as a tourist, you might be turned off by that. If you're a regular visitor to the Cayman Islands, 
you know, you're kind of used to the fact that it, it's expensive here, and so not a lot of riffraff around. <laughs> In other words, you're not going to have gazillions of tourists who are looking for $9.99 t-shirts uh, as their big expense to take back home. You're talking about tourists with some capital and some cash who are paying for serenity. Well, this year, there isn't as much serenity as normal in the Cayman Islands. There's a lot of spillover going on. And like I say, uh, it's busy and it's active. And so traffic is probably a bit of a problem this year. Um, beach congestion, maybe not so much. There's a lot of areas on the island you can go for, for beach time. And then, of course, on the resorts, uh, hey, uh, if you're in the Ritz-Carlton and they can hold 800 people, they can hold 800 people. Uh, it's not like they're going to have 1,600 there this year. They're going to have 800 people there. They just might be more expensive this year than last year because more more demand. But uh, that's what's happening in the Caribbean. Certain islands are, are benefiting from the hurricane scenario. Others are still recovering. And, uh, of course, I'll finish off by talking about Puerto Rico and San Juan. Uh, we're still hearing stories. Here we are in you know, the end of December, three months, two and a half months after the hurricane, only half the island on average has electrical, uh, electric power, only half. Uh, all of Florida is recovered, all of Houston is recovered. Um, you know, any, any uh, island, any, any uh, mainland uh, state that got hit with the hurricanes, power's back, it was back weeks ago, months ago. But um, Puerto Rico, U.S. territory, only half. And that just shows you the logistical nightmare that these officials are dealing with, um, the contractors and so on. It is a mess. And, uh, you know, the reality is and was that before the hurricanes got to Puerto Rico, the electrical grid was held together by duct tape already. It was a disaster. The island is in a financial hole, upwards of $80 billion in debt, and the electric rates that islanders were paying were sky high, and the electric company just didn't have the capital to upgrade its infrastructure over the last number of years. It's, in effect, been getting worse and worse and worse on a quality scale. And when the hurricanes came in, it just wiped out what was still standing, and it didn't take much to cause outages. There were blackouts in Puerto Rico uh, for the last two years. There have been blackouts all over the place, all over the island. So many building operators and resort operators in Puerto Rico do not rely on the grid like we do at home. They, they, they are happy when it's up and running, but they're prepared for when it goes down with their own generators. I mean, unthinkable on the mainland that you'd have a generator system as a backup for your resort because you can't rely on the grid uh, you know, to, to supply you with the power. But here we are uh, down the line, and I have a suspicion that um, these blackouts will continue. I, I don't think the, uh, the system has been upgraded. It's been basically brought back online, patchwork, patch by patch, bit by bit by bit. Uh, but I don't know if it's up and running like it should be. So anyway, uh, we'll have to see how this plays out as time goes on. And uh, the future, what will the future be for the island? I, I kind of hope that the, this, this disaster has spurred a lot of the islands in the Caribbean to really start thinking about going solar and going with windmills rather than just the uh, the old standby diesel operated uh, generator systems. I mean, it's expensive, it's high in pollution, uh, you know, the, the, the fuel scenario, it can be cut off with a bad storm and then your generators don't work even anyway because you have no fuel. Uh, sunshine is sunshine, wind is wind, um, and it's free, it's perpetual, why not take advantage of it? So I'm kind of hoping that as we go forward we'll hear more and more stories of the conversion of uh, power systems into these uh, you know, renewable resources. It's, I think it's a smart way to go, but time will tell. Well, anyway, there you go. That's today's daily, daily number 23 on December the 30th, 2017. I gotta say, folks, thank you so much for watching my channel. Thanks for keeping up with me. Uh, I'll tell you, you got ahead of me there. Are 132 subscribers on my last video. I've got 175 now. We're 25 away from 200. And it's unbelievable, uh, five to seven to 10 subscribers a day are coming on board from time to time. I, it's, just, it's just phenomenal. I don't want to pre-predict pre, pre, pre my 200 subscriber, but that's a lot sooner than I thought, and it's fantastic. We're probably going to hit later today or tomorrow my 30,000th view on my channel. I seriously thought uh, I would hit 100 subscribers when I reached 30,000 subscribers. I didn't think I'd hit 200 subscribers. So 
or almost 200 by the time I got to 30,000 views. It's amazing. It really is. Thanks again for watching my channel. I'll see you again uh, probably next couple of days. Like I say, I've got a bunch coming up, uh, new videos coming up, and it's a new year coming. So if I don't talk to you between now and New Year's Eve, Happy New Year, everybody. Let's uh, look forward to 2018. We'll hopefully make it an even better year than 2017. In the meantime, this is Bruce saying so long from Traveling.